We are in session 8 today. In this session, we will look into the constructors and destructors in general and uh, we'll see a complete uh, constructors to start with and uh, we'll see a parameter less or default constructors, parameterized constructors, instance constructor, private constructors, a static constructors, a copy constructors, and finally destructors. And we'll see all of that along with the default value table um, and we'll see what is a default value table uh, that dot net uh, carries for all the variables in case if you don't initialize them. And also we'll see a properties and program structure how it looks like starting with the hello world which we have already seen in the previous sessions. So saying that we'll kick off the session 8 and uh, drill down into all the details. So we're going to see uh, the user defined data types uh, members within the uh, data types. So we know the user defined data type we're going to use to create the uh, classes, the composite classes wherein uh, um, we can define more um, members within it to represent real world objects and uh, the constructors are uh, the core part of the uh, user defined data types which are used to initialize the uh, built-in members uh, which, is, which are pr pretty much the data members in other words the private members that we normally refer to. So the constructor will be invoked implicitly whenever uh, you use the new keyword so that's a key thing there. So if you see uh, when I create uh, a new keyword here so that time only the constructor which is this part of the person will be invoked. So you cannot invoke it explicitly just like a, a property or a method. So that's a key thing you need to remember. And here um, if you see this is a similar uh, syntactical uh, differences uh, between the VB dot and a C sharp code on the side by side. Um, so we know that C sharp is a, a case sensitive language and VB dot net is not and um, if you see um, the, the, um, the, uh, the keywords in the C sharp are pretty much all small case. It begins with a small case like a C starts with small case, int i starts uh, small, public as a X modifier it starts small case and it's called it's all opposite in VB.NET. So VB.NET is a more uh, English type of language. It follows the uh, the English grammar kind of syntax uh, and uh, so any sentence that begins it will start with the capital so the all the keywords uh, will start with the capital letter just class C for C is a capital in class P as access modifier P is a capital and so on um, and the underscore we have seen as, an, as part of the naming convention for public members we create uh, we give an underscore to represent that these are the public uh, member or uh, global level members or the class level members. Um, okay, so the constructors part, we're using this constructor to initialize my local variables. In other words, my private members. And uh, the default uh, parameter less constructor is uh, is used implicitly by the program. You don't have to specify this in uh, in normal scenarios. We have seen the kind of examples in the previous sessions uh, that without even creating a, a constructor it will still work um, because uh, by default uh, .NET provides a default constructor for all the classes um, uh, and also the structures. The structures also will have a default constructor but it will not let you create a default constructor explicitly. Okay, so that we have uh, seen in the previous session. Um, so in this case uh, we are assigning a value for local variables and uh, we are making use of it and uh, so the default parameter less constructor uh, if you do not provide a uh, constructor C sharp or the dot net in general will create one by default and if you don't create what will happen to these members. If you don't create a default constructor there is a default set of values for each data type that we have discussed in the dot net. 
So um, the compiler will assign the respective default values. Uh, we'll see the li list of uh, default values uh, in the next uh, uh, slide. So till uh, for now, we'll have a quick demo on the constructor. Okay, so here I have, uh, and I hope uh, you all have access to the source code. Uh, and okay, so this is the program that I have here to demonstrate the um, constructors. Okay, and uh, so there's something called an insta instance fields that I'm talking about. So in general, so what is a field? The field is going to be pretty much like a property, uh, uh, but they are of public. So in this case, this is not a uh, field, uh, but they are private fields. Uh, so the fields are in public in nature, which can be accessed from outside the program without um, uh, without any restrictions, which are public in nature. In other words, so if you if you declare this as a public, then this will become a field. Okay, and uh, so since the, uh, these are private members, one cannot access them from outside. So this is part of the access modifiers topic. I don't want to mix both. So we'll keep uh, this session only for the constructors. Okay, so the constructors uh, are used to initialize the local variables. Okay, that's the primary um, role of a constructor. So next time, Paul might be having a question saying, um, uh, what is the purpose of a constructor? So the constructor purpose, sole purpose, is to initialize the local members. Okay. And uh, here in this case, I'm having an explicit uh, uh, user-defined uh, default constructor. So this is a parameterless or default constructor where it's not taking any parameters, and I'm assigning 99 and for name unknown by default. Okay. So. Um, We'll see that part here. So this is how the default constructor is invoked. First of all, you need to create an instance of it, and then uh, uh, access the respective properties. So we have seen these properties in the last session. So properties, uh, an overview we will see. There are a couple of more details about the properties. And finally, we are showing the values in the properties. So uh, till now, I will uh, take this code away. So we see that the um, the value that I have assigned it here uh, is superseded uh, with the values uh, that are created in the constructor. So if you see line by line debug, so I had a de debug pointer here, and I'm going to run the code, and I, and I'm going to step into the uh, code by using the F11. So when I hit F11, the next step it went in is the constructor. Okay, so that indicates uh, soon after the new keyword is in, uh, identified, it hit the constructor. How can I confirm that that a new keyword will only invoke it because because here it doesn't really uh, make a difference. So to make a difference, what I'm going to do now is. Stop it and change the code. So I will call the new in the next line. Okay. So at this point, I'll just create an instance of it, and now I will say po is equal to new person. So uh, it's as good as the first statement. So at this stage, I have created a variable of type person, but I have not called the new keyword. So in the second statement, I am calling the new keyword. Okay, so according to the theory, so what should happen here is whenever I call the new keyword, that time only the constructor should get invoked. Okay, so we'll see that. Okay, so my breakpoint uh, uh, jumped. Let me go back and reset the big breakpoint, or it's that. Uh, see if, if you notice it carefully. Although I had a breakpoint at the first statement, it's just a variable declaration. So the breakpoints at variable declaration uh, really makes no meaning. So the breakpoint automatically jumped to the next statement. So we'll see again pressing F11. So if you notice, um, the second statement was actually referred to the new keyword. 
and that's when it's went into the constructor. Okay, so that indicates that confirms the theory that saying uh, only new keyword will invoke the constructor. So if you look into little more details of uh, this uh, two lines, so when this variable got created, this variable got um, a space allocated in the memory without any values within it. Okay, so only the space code allocated without any values. So when the new uh, keyword is uh, identified, at that time the respective members in the uh, variable will be allocated in the memory. Okay, so we have these uh, values getting assigned and if by default if you see it's zero. So if you have not assigned this 99, so the default value for, if you see the default value for int data type is zero and for string it is null. Okay, so those are the default values which we, we're going to see uh, if you don't have a constructor. Okay, since I already have a, a constructor invoked and I already had the default values at this point and since I overwritten the default values, I'm able to see the values that I have, I have assigned, okay. I'll take this off and uh, I comment out my uh, explicit, explicit assignments and roll back the uh, line to make it again a simple line of code and let's see. So in this case I should be getting the default values which is 99 and unknown. So these are the values that are initialized by the constructor, okay, and which is making use of the default constructor. Okay, that ends the demo for the first point. So wherein we have a default constructor used to initialize the local variables and it will be invoked only by the new operator or new keyword. If you carefully com uh, compare the code block in vb.net, um, it doesn't have any member by name person. So the constructor in vb.net is created using a new keyword itself. If you see, so that's the new keyword that you use to create instance of the uh, class and the same new keyword you use to define the constructor. So it is a more, uh, if you compare to vb.net was a C sharp language, so C sharp has a little bit of disconnects. Uh, if you see, there is the code doesn't say anything about new, but it uh, when you use it as part of the usage perspective, it really tied up the new to this method. So it's little disconnected there. Um, so that's vb.net is more user friendly language. Uh, so it is uh, more intuitive than C sharp uh, as a as a programmer perspective. So the new keyword is directly reflected in the vb.net code itself and that indicates, okay, whenever this, uh, whenever you use the new keyword, okay, this will get fired. So it's more uh, uh, straightforward and relevant uh, reference there. Okay, so we'll be comparing both the languages side by side um, and uh, throughout our sessions, okay. So these are the list of the default values that will be uh, seen if you don't uh, use a default constructor, okay. Um, so the default constructors, if you don't specify, then if you see um, bool in C sharp or boolean in vb.net uh, will have a false by default and similarly byte will have zero, char has a new line character or a backslash zero. So this is a special case uh, which you can use to represent uh, characters or ASCII values within it. And decimal, uh, double, enum, single, so we will be seeing more of an enum down the line um, and also double and decimal in one of our ex uh, code examples and uh, how to assign the values to this. So it, it has a M representing money and D represents one double, so there's a standard way that you can assign a values to it. Um, and single F again float in C sharp, so that's why F represented there as a float value and L for long and so on. So all numeric data types will have zero by default and reference type uh, data type will have null. Okay, if you have an object created and it will have a null by uh, by default. 
So the next uh, uh, thing is the parameterized constructor wherein you can have a parameterized uh, constructor. In C sharp it's the name, same name with the set of parameters that you're passing in. Okay, so have you ever uh, noticed a difference between a parameter and an argument? Okay, so the parameter is a part of your you can keep in mind, this is important, a parameter is a uh, member of your uh, method signature. Uh, in C sharp everything is a method, even this is a method which has a signature. Within the signature you have the members uh, uh, and each of the members have their specific name and data type. So these are uh, part of the signature itself, those are parameters. The argument, what is an argument? So the argument is the value that you pass in to the member. So in this case, int uh, uid or string name, these are parameters which are associated to the signature of the person constructor. It's not specific to constructor but it's specific to uh, any method or any function that takes arguments or parameters, okay? So these are the parameters and that indicates this will take two arguments. So when I create an instance of it, I'm passing 100 and some name, okay? So these are the arguments that I'm passing in. So that's the uh, key thing to differentiate what is an argument and what is a parameter, okay? And in this case, uh, so we have uh, taken um, values as part of the instantiation. So in this case of P1, I create a new instance and I pass the values directly to initialize the P1 instance. Okay, and similarly in VB.NET, it's the same new uh, public sub new and with the signature. Uh, in VB.NET, there's a difference between what is a byval and byref and other things. So I will cover that as well. Okay, and VB.NET, if you see, um, uh, it has a difference between a function and a procedure. Okay, so functions will return a value, whereas the procedures will not. So we would not uh, use the keyword say sub, uh, representing subroutine for members that doesn't return any return type. And the C sharp, C sharp has a couple of uh, distinctions there. Um, here, although um, uh, this is this looks like more or less like a method that means it is taking some arguments and doing something within the block uh, it doesn't in, return any return type again so it is just a public person which is public is an access modifier which means it can be accessed from anywhere and uh, it doesn't return anything but for normal methods or functions in C sharp you need to specify a written type that's a little distinction between a structure structure is a unique here which doesn't return any written type but the name will match with the name of a class that's the uh, standard characteristics of a constructor okay vb.net it is a pretty much a subroutine and that's why it is uh, written as a sub and this public is an access modifier and the new is the constructor keyword and which is directly reflected to your instance. Okay, we're good. So we'll see this as well uh, as part of the demo uh, quickly. So we saw this one and uh, we are good with this and uh, the next one is going to be pretty quick. So I wanted to actually have this line uh, on top of this. Okay. So this is what using the parameterized constructor wherein I'm passing 100 and some name here. Okay and uh, the signature of the parameter as constructor is here. It's pretty much uh, getting the value from the uh, parameters and initializing the local variables. Okay, and uh, we'll see more of why we are doing this way in when we talk about the um, 
object oriented programming okay uh, like uh, having uh, a local variable and uh, exposing them uh, using uh, or initializing them using a constructor and also exposing them as a properties we will see more of why or why aspects of that uh, in object oriented programming okay so I want you to uh, familiarize with all these basic concepts uh, before we get into the object oriented programming or access modifiers. That's the reason I'm, I just streamline these uh, in order. Okay, so we have this value passed in as part of the constructor, which is parameter as constructor. We saw the value. So pretty straightforward. Um, nothing to worry about that and nothing so complicated about it. And that's how we're going to use it. We're done. And instance constructor. So next one. So what is an instance constructor? So what we did so far is nothing but an instance constructor. So you will see a difference. So why this keyword? Okay. So if you remember, I have been keep on saying um, instance, 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 right? So in this case, um, P0 is an instance or it's called also called as an object of type person okay and similarly in c sharp p0 it's the same concept or uh, it's not specific to a language so p0 is referred to as an instance of type person or you can also call p o p0 is an object of type person so if you remember, person is a user-defined data type. Okay, keep in mind that's a type. And uh, in this case, uh, why it is specifically said that as an instance? Because so far what we did is nothing but an instance uh, instance constructor. So what does an instance constructor do? It actually initializes the uh, instance members of the class. Okay, so there is something called a static member as well. Okay, so that makes it more specific. So in general, in the previous slide, we have seen a just a normal constructor. We didn't say anything specific. So this is nothing but an instance because in we these variables are going to be part of the instance instantiated object. Okay, so whenever you create a new use a, use a new keyword and the uh, the respective constructor got invoked, is nothing but it actually in, initialized the local variables. Um, and these local variables are normal types, which are instance types, which are available as part of the instance. Okay, there is something called some special type of uh, members which can be uh, disconnected completely from this instance, or they can be available without an instance. Okay, so those are static types. So in this case, we are good. So whatever we have seen so far is an instance type because the instance means uh, they are part of the instance. Okay, it's P1. P1 is an instance. So we'll see uh, what's the difference. Um, so, so the difference will be more clear when we talk about the static. So statics are a very special case of data types. Um, or it's a keyword that makes the members very special. How special they are. Um, so whenever uh, uh, the compiler looks at the static keyword in C sharp and uh, shared in VB.NET, so shared is a uh, synonym for um, static in VB.NET, and uh, if you see, static is a synonym for VB.NET. So static in C sharp is equal to shared in VB.NET. Okay, if you see the the real time English word of a shared, okay, people are sharing things. Okay, so what does it mean sharing? So it means that whenever these uh, uh, values are instantiated uh, or created instance of it, uh, the whenever the compiler starts loading this uh, class, it will actually first look for any static members within the class. And whenever you create an instance, uh, you don't have to actually create an instance of the uh, class to access these members. So what it means that I don't; these are not tied up to the instance of the class. So, in other words, we'll see how 
uh, it's going to, you can actually have a static, in this case we have a static constructor. So that means this static constructor has nothing to do with the instance of the person. We'll see what exactly. So this is a uh, example of the same program having some of these static members, okay? So in this case, I have uh, a timestamp, okay? So, and also a number of instances. Before we get into more of the details, let, let us see how it is different from the instance members, okay? I have to take this away. And guys, uh, this is a very, very important and uh, uh, very troublesome topic uh, uh, having statics. Uh, statics are very, very useful in many cases and also they are the trouble creators also. So you need to uh, be very, very sure when you're using a static members in your class. Uh, so please be attentive in this topic. Um, so in this case, if you see, this class has a uh, static member which are exposed using a static, in this case, number of instances, okay, number of instances um, are exposed using a static member, a public static, and these are private static, okay, that's again access modifier is added on top of it. You can actually have a public static also, which makes them more of fields that can be assigned from directly. So the static members will have only one and only one copy in the memory. For example, uh, so as I mentioned, whenever you, whenever the class construct is identified and the static keywords are um, visible, the compiler is going to create a separate memory area for all this, all these static members, and they, that static mem memory will be shared across n number of instances of the same class. Okay, uh, what it means is. Um, so if I have 10 instances of st person static, so it will have 10 different copies of the instance members. Okay, if you see unique ID, unique ID will be unique again for the respective instance. The instance is nothing but your PO. So PO will have its own copy of that property instance members, okay, because this is an instance of the respective type. So instance will always have a, their own copy of uh, uh, values uh, irrespective of a number of uh, instances you create. So everyone will have the same copy. Uh, okay, don't confuse this with this uh, the structures. Okay, structures are a little different. We are into the heap again. So uh, inside the heap, P1 is, its, uh, is an object by itself. And in this case, P2 is another object. Okay, and uh, and remember, P1 is not equal to P2 because I'm not assigning here, like saying P0 is equal to P1. In this case, uh, everyone will be referring to the same address, okay, uh, that we have seen in the uh, mutability aspect. So here I'm not doing that. So every, uh, every instance is independent of each other. So instance members will have their own copy in the respective instance variable. So P1 will have its own copy of uh, unique ID. P1 will, P, P0 will have its own copy of name. Similarly here, okay, uh, parameterized constructor. We are fine over here and I want to do this part right now. Okay, so that's the difference between an instance uh, and the static. Static is quite opposite to it. So if you remember carefully, I did not give you an overview of what does the static means. We have been seeing the static keyword from the very beginning of the Hello World application. So what does the static mean in the static void main? So we, this is the time for us to see more of a static, okay? So if you see this time, main is an entry point for your program. So that indicates that this should be available for your compiler 
to access it without creating an instance of the class. So that's the reason this needs to be a static. Okay, what will happen if I make it public or, or, or remove it completely and make it public? Okay, let's see what will happen. I will compile this. It doesn't accept it. Okay, so what it says, the exe does not contain a static main method suitable for an entry point. Okay, so remember, so the entry point need to be a static. And also remember that this main block will have only one copy in the memory. So this is the main block that is going to be an entry point for your program and the program whenever you run it's going to run in its own process area and it will have the main as a static so that means the main method is in a static memory area that means it is shared across n number of instances of this program okay so down the line if i create if you say app domain right the app domain uh, when i create so app domain you can have multiple uh, each instance of this program into the respective app domain and app domain all of the app domains will have the same um, the main method which is static so again so coming back to the uh, instance versus static members so instance members will have their own copy so in this case, uh, I will again give you one more example to really make uh, sure that you got it. Uh, okay. So in this case, I have. Uh, okay. I will say something called. Uh, we already have two. I'll make it three. Okay. And uh, three, three, and three, and this is three. Okay and uh, I also have P1 here. So all of these are actually having a stat, uh, person static. So here P1 uh, is having 100 here and also here is 100 so I'll make it a different number here. I'll say 300 and uh, here it is 200 and say some other name um, or name I can take. Okay. I'll take one of the name here and uh, 200 is the one, uh, Sushant. And okay, so we're good. So we have three instances here, P0, P3, and P1. Okay, three instances have their own copy of value here. But for static, they will all have the same memory or same uh, value shared across any number of instances. So saying that, I can actually track how many instances this class got created by using a number of instances, okay? So in this case, I have three instances of the uh, class uh, person static and I have three different copies. These are all instance members, so that's why they have their own copy. They cannot be shared across the multiple instances. So whereas the static members can be shared across multiple instances. In this case, I'm demonstrating with having a number of instances uh, as a local variable and uh, also the timestamp of first instance. Okay, so static members can be used because static number members, if you have a static method, in this case, we have static constructor. So I'll quickly go to the static constructor Where is it? Okay, so here is the static constructor. Let me, okay, we'll need uh, them also. Okay, so this is a static and with the same name. So what will this do is it's going to be called first uh, before uh, any of the instances got created. And also since this method is going to be only one copy for any number of instances, so this will be called only once. Okay, whereas these constructors are specific to instance, uh, specific to the instance. So every instance, whenever they see new keyword, this will be invoked for every instance. But again, uh, once for every instance, and this will be called 
for the first instance only. For, for the rest of the instance, it won't be called. Okay, so this is the right place for me to uh, initialize my number of instances. So in this case, uh, it will be zero for the first time, and I'm uh, actually incrementing that to plus one. So there's another shortcut way to increment here. So if you see the operators that we have covered, and uh, we can use plus uh, is equal to one. So this is an incrementing operator and increment by one, which is as good as that number plus one. Okay. Oops. Plus is equal to. Okay, so this is one of the operator. Plus one. Plus is equal to. Um, Good. So we'll uh, demonstrate. So what I'm expecting here is the number of instances uh, is exposed again as a property here, and this property is also static. Okay, and this is uh, re referring the static member, which is number of instances. So what I'm expecting to see is to track how many instances of this object has been created. So this uh, will initialize. This uh, is a constructor, which is a static constructor. This will initialize my static members. Okay, remember, uh, static members can be accessed by the instance members, but not other way around. Okay, don't get confused with this. Instance member will be associated to the instance of the class, which is a P0, whereas uh, uh, in this case, all the instance members are associated to the P0, which is the instance of the class. But static members are associated to the class, not to the instance. Okay, to quickly show you that, um, I'll copy this and paste this and put dot. What I see is number of instance. Okay, because number of instance is a static member and that is associated to the class not to the instance and what all are associated to the instance p0 dot if I say I have unique ID name and show so on uh, uh, stamp of the first instance of okay, the time uh, timestamp in other words so timestamp is uh, timestamp is a property again so this is not declared as a Share uh, as a static. That's why it it is not uh, it's not part of the uh, class. It's part of the instance. We'll quick, uh, quickly show you the method. Sorry, the property. So we have the uh, timestamp or stamp of a stamp. Or let me make it more clear to make it okay. Timestamp. Someone is using this, and so I have to go and fix them also. Okay, so we're good. So timestamp is not a static, so that's why it is associated to the instance. And whereas the number of instances is a static member, and it is associated to the class. So can I see the number of instances uh, in the instance variable? If you see, you cannot. So that's a clear distinction between a static members and an instance members. Okay, uh, so instance members are accessible through the instance of that class, whereas the whereas the static members are accessed through the type, which is uh, in this case person static dot. I can see number of instances. Okay. So let me run this code and see uh, if I am able to see what I'm expecting to see. Okay, so if you see the static uh, uh, constructor got uh, invoked here, and I'm pressing F5 to continue. And we got the code. So uh, if you remember, if you see that uh, when I hit F5, uh, because I have three separate instances, it didn't stop here again. So it, it got continued because uh, 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 this will be called only once uh, for the and, uh, number of instances. And uh, also if you see, 
the number of instances of this view is not good enough. So I'm going to increase the width to 100 and height to 50. Doesn't. Okay. Um, so if, uh, if you see uh, the PO, the instance uh, number is 1, whereas a PO it's again same. And uh, P3, P3 uh, should have instance 2 because P3 is a second instance of it. So unfortunately I got 1. So I have to debug and see why. Okay. And the P1 again I have instance number here 2. two. Okay. So we'll see why the uh, this number is not got incremented. So what I wanted to see originally was to make sure the instances were uh, number of instances got reflected here. Since I have three instances, which is P0, P3, and P P where is the other one? P1. So I, I should see number of instances to three, but I got only two. And why? We'll see. So as you see, the incrementing um, operation is done in the default constructor here, okay, which is a static constructor. And also, I'm actually uh, incrementing that in the respective constructors. Why? Because we have a different uh, ways we have instantiated these members. The first one is using the default constructor. And the default constructor, if you notice, we have uh, two default constructors in this case. One is a public default constructor. In this case, we are not actually incrementing the number. Okay? And we have a static default constructor. In this case, we are actually incrementing the number. So what happened here is when this got uh, instantiated, we'll see in action uh, rather than theory. Okay, so we'll I'll add a breakpoint uh, here or here. That's better. So this is a default constructor, and also we'll have a breakpoint to the first line here and start it. So I'm getting into F11, which is getting into the code. So the first, uh, although we have a two def two default constructors, it hit the first one which is a static one okay and let us see what will happen next I'm hitting F11 uh, sorry F10 to next line and if you see the next immediately it is also calling the the instance constructor which is uh, initializing the local variables with the default values okay and we pass that stage and it got that that particular instance got uh, hit and the next is again creating the instance of P3 using the same default constructor. I'm not passing any parameters here. Okay. So what will happen in this case? I'm hitting F11 to get in. Notice that it's not gone to the static constructor in this case. Okay. It's gone directly to the instance constructor. So that's the reason the plus uh, the number of instances did not got incremented because I was doing the incremental operation only in this static constructor. So this indicates that the static members will be invoked only for the first instance. That means this method is available at the global. Um, for the global for the accessing any, any number of instances. So what this helps you to do is if you have any uh, routine that you want to run for the first instance of your class and remaining all other instances need not do it, so then the static constructor is a good, a good way to do it. Okay? And also you can have a static methods uh, which you can access uh, with without creating an instance of the class. So when will that be useful? So that will be useful when uh, you want to, if you remember the original definition was saying that all the uh, features or all the members, or all the methods, or everything is available as part of an object in 
base class library. So in .NET, pretty much everything need to be part of a class. Okay, including, if you see, if you notice carefully, including my first program, even if it is static word main, is a class. Okay, and also, uh, if you see the Visual Basic, uh, even my first uh, module, um, it's a module is a different thing, let's go, not, not go there. Uh, module is a higher a higher level to a class again, so uh, that's available only in VB.NET, not in C-Sharp. So even uh, VB.NET, it is a, a class. So everything is a class in .NET. Um, so what it means is if I have any um, methods or like a helper classes or say for example show me this message or log away text to this file uh, so uh, you might come across some kind of formatting or some kind of helper classes that you want to write uh, which can be used without creating an instance of them or which can be shared across your entire application instance uh, as simple as uh, if you have an SSN number formatting for example uh, the SSN number has a format uh, like uh, uh, three-digit number hyphen, three-digit number hyphen, four-digit, so on. So, for example, or even a phone, if you say phone number has a specific formatting, right? So, if you want to uh, provide such kind of uh, logic as a shared members so that people can make you, or uh, the program or your entire pro project can make use of the, those methods uh, without making, uh, without creating an instance of it. In those cases, you can make the, those members as static. So saying that, uh, what I did here is the same thing. So in this case, I wanted to access the number of instances that are being created uh, um, without creating instance of it. And how did I access it? So let me go ahead and uh, go to the show method. So the, this is the place where I'm actually um, writing it. So this is the number of instances that I'm referring to. And remember, uh, also notice that I'm using, uh, I'm referring it using the class name, not the instance name. Again, there's a special thing called a this here. Okay. What is this? So this is a keyword um, that refers to itself. So we are inside the uh, person, uh, uh, per person static block. And if you're referring to the instance, the current instance, you use the this keyword. So this keyword refers to the current instance within the code, within the class. Okay, so using that, so this is this dot Unique ID is what uh, refers to the current instance unique ID and similarly current instance name and this is since this is static so I am referring to using the name of the member uh, a static member so that's how I'm getting the value there out okay so that's the I uh, hope that is clear not too confusing uh, uh, please make sure that this gets into your may, uh, brain and uh, uh, never get confused with it. Statics are all shared in, in VB.NET it is shared and C Sharp it is static and static members are available without creating instance of the class um, which can be accessed using the class name and instance members can be accessed only uh, with their instance okay like the P1 you have to create an instance of it to access them okay that's the key difference and um, also, why it is uh, dangerous, dangerous or not recommended to use in most of the cases? It's uh, it's not that it's not recommended to use. Uh, it is uh, uh, that it's a best practice to make sure that you will you use static only when you really need it. Okay, so by because that memory is shared, and if by chance if someone updates it. Uh, so that reflects everywhere. So it's the same thing. It's the same concept like a reference uh, variables, uh, reference uh, instance of a reference variable, uh, reference data type, referring to one another. In which case, both are referring to the same address. So that's again a, a, a key thing to remember because uh, in respect to changes wherever you do, they will reflect to both the variables. And for static, it's a similar thing, but the static is part of the class itself and uh, static is going to be having one copy for all its instances. Hope that is clear. If you have any questions or doubts on that area, let me know.
Um, yep, so let's go back to the static. So we are good. And um, yeah, this is another key thing that I wanted to say. The static members uh, cannot access the instance members. Why? So that's in red. So that's again a key thing to know about a static members because static members going to be invoked before uh, the instance of the class is created. So they uh, you need to uh, uh, you cannot actually access the instance members within the static blocks. For example, in this case, uh, this is a static. This is a static, and I can able to access them from a static constructor right so if I try to refer to this dot the compiler itself is not even helping me to go there so uh, in other words I don't want to access it this way what I'll do is I'll access it this way okay I'll try to uh, assign a value to an instance member which is one here if you see a unique uh, ID is an instance member and it straight away says an object reference is required for a non-static field method or property. Okay, uh, unique ID is a, a instance type, instance uh, data member whereas we are trying to access it within a static method or a static constructor. So this is not allowed because the static is going to be invoked uh, prior the instance is created. So you cannot access it in the static members. So that's a very, very important uh, thing you need to remember. And guys, this is a 100% short, short question in interviews. And uh, I might uh, cover this also in uh, uh, one of our question polls as well okay so this is a very very important topic uh, to keep in mind make sure you understand it okay and uh, private constructors so this is a very very another uh, very good uh, topic to discuss a uh, private constructor so what's the use of them so private, private constructors are very powerful uh, in implementing uh, certain patterns Oh, uh, hope you have not heard the keyword. Also, if you have heard the keyword, uh, they, there are certain uh, best practices uh, uh, which are delivered as a patterns, and uh, the patterns are pretty much a solution to a problem uh, in the software domain. Um, so, uh, I will be covering the uh, software design patterns uh, in the advanced.net. Um, uh, in the curriculum, uh, but for now, um, so since we have got introduced to the private constructors, uh, the private constructors will uh, enforce the users not to create the instance of the class. So how you restrict people using the new keyword and creating instance, uh, like in this case, if you see. In this case, if you see, we're, try we're trying to create an instance of the uh, person but your, your compiler makes it not possible. You cannot create an instance of it using a new keyword if you have a private constructor. Okay, this is how you can restrict people creating instance of it. When will you do this? So you can do this in a similar situation wherein uh, when I have a static members with a net and this need to be having only one and only one instance. So in the earlier uh, discussion we have, uh, we can actually have a static class which will ensure that no matter how many instances you create, you will still have only one copy in the memory. Okay, if you make a class as a static or similarly to if you have a, a method as a static, no matter how many instances you create of that class, you'll have only one copy created in the memory, which will be shared across all the instances. Okay, what speciality about private is, private will restrict you to creating a number of instances. In, this, in the first place, it will not allow you to create any instance. Okay, um, so using this feature, what you can do is, you can expose a public member which will create an instance of it and internally maintains only one copy 
uh, to ensure that you have only one copy created. So instead of static way, so static way uh, is a little different. Although technically you will have only one copy created in the memory, users can actually create any number of instances uh, here and there. Uh, so that's again a wrong way that you're allowing people to make use of it. So having a, a class defined as a static uh, is not that uh, best way to uh, do it. Uh, a, a private constructor is the best way to restrict people creating instances of your class. And exposing a method saying a create instance of it will allow you to have a handle on what you need to do to if you, if there is any prerequisites that you need to perform before creating instance or before closing an instance or so on so you will have a only one uh, entry point uh, wherein you can control people uh, to creating instance of your class so the, it is more within your scope to handle it rather than having a static class which is wide open okay so that's the overview of a private constructor um, so we can actually show, have a quick demo also um, of this. Um, if I go to the, okay, let me comment this out and also take this out. Okay, let me go back to this where I have, okay, um, okay, so I have a constructor here, this is public, and I'm going to take the public away and bring it uh, to private. So it's pretty much nothing but the access modifier of the constructor is changed to private. Okay, so that's the only difference here. And my code breaks. Why? Because I have taken away the commands part here. Okay. And there we go. So since I have my constructor private, so the compiler complains that the person is inaccessible due to its protection level, which is the constructor is private, so it cannot access the constructor here. So this way, uh, one cannot create a code uh, using a new keyword and they cannot create instance of the class. Okay, it's pretty clear, it's straightforward. I'm going to make it available so that it gets compiled. Okay, so we're good. So that's all about the um, private constructors. And it's uh, again useful when you're making, uh, uh, implementing a single, single learn pattern. A typical example uh, I can give you right away. Uh, for example, if you're actually writing uh, a uh, application specific diagnostic logs, or uh, you're trying to do an uh, audit trail entries to a flat file, um, whenever whatever user is trying to do in the application. So user says, suppose he edited some uh, fields on the application form and hit submitted or updated it or deleted a record and you want to maintain an audit trail over all the user actions, so whatever he's performing in a flat file. So no matter how many users are accessing that application, you still want to maintain one flat file for all the user log. So for that kind of implementation, what you do is you're going to have a, um, a class which writes to the log file and uh, make sure that instance of this uh, class is created only one instance because that instance is need to be shared across all the uh, instances of the application. Uh, in those cases, uh, because your flat file is going to be only one flat file, you need to make sure that only one person writes to it and uh, logs it. Otherwise, if multiple uh, threads try to write to the same flat file, uh, it's going to break because when one of the flat file or one of the thread is trying to write to the flat file and at the same time another thread comes into play and both will have conflicts. So one will be succeeded and the other one will be uh, failed because it will be in read-only mode or locked by the previous thread. 
So in those cases, uh, it's ideal to have a class implemented with a private constructor so that people don't create multiple instances of it and only one instance is created for the entire application use. Okay, that's a typical example of a, a, you uh, making use of a singleton pattern uh, using the, of course, the private constructor. Okay, next interesting topic is the copy constructor. <coughs> so the copy constructors are a little um, uh, different, or it's a pretty much same. It uses a, it uses the same principle behind the constructor, which is initializing the local variables. Uh, but the copy constructors can be used to copy the values of a previous instance. Uh, for example, you have a p0. In this case, I have a p1. I have a p1 and p2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create p2 using the values that p1 has. So in this case, uh, I can make use of a copy constructor so that the constructor will actually copy the values from p1, in this case p1, to p2. Okay, so this is completely different from assigning p1 is equal to p2. So that way also you can actually copy the values, but that will be copying the reference, not the values. Okay. Make sure that's a big difference between copying the values and copying the reference. Since P1 and P2 are both are reference types, when I say uh, P1 is equal to P2, it will go to the class uh, reference type behavior of a mutation. So both will be mutable. So if whenever I change P2 value, it will be also reflected in P1. We don't want that to happen. But I want to create a copy of P1 into P2 using a copy constructor. How is that possible? Technically it is not possible in C-sharp because C-sharp doesn't support a copy constructor uh, which is natively available in the other object-oriented programs like C++ or C. Um, so C-sharp uh, we have an alternative to achieve that. So what you need to do is you have to write your own copy constructor. Uh, it's little a workaround to the feature that is not available in C sharp. Okay. So how we're going to do is I'm going to have a constructor, of course, another ha taking a person as a parameter. So if you see, this is a constructor for the person, and it is taking its own type as an argument. Okay, so when I'm creating an instance of it, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the values of uh, the person that I'm getting in another instance and taking its uh, value and copying it to the local instance. So this is just a workaround. So in this case, what I'm happen happening is P1 is created with a set of values, 100 and uh, Gaia 3, and uh, I'm copying these two values into P2. So now, both having the same values, they all, they both are separate instances. They are not referring to the same address. They have their own instance, okay? So we'll see this part. Okay, so we're good with that. So this is the copy constructor we have. And it's taking um, a parameter of type person. So the person is the self itself, right? It's, it is the class itself. So it's taking instance of that and from that it is reading the values and initializing it. So I'm going to take this off, uh, which is the default constructor. And the final one is the copy constructor. So what I'm doing here, I also need the previous instance. Okay. I need both of them because I'm passing P1 as an input to P2 and creating an instance of it. And if you see both are having values, same values because P2 is created from the values given in P1. Okay, let's see if this is muti uh, mutation happening here, okay? Let me try to modify P2 values and see if that is getting changed.
Okay, so I'll say 88 and uh, p2 dot uh, name is equal to mutation. So is this mutable or oh, sorry, this is a number so I can give it in quotes. Okay, so let me check what will happen now. So if you see, P1 has its own copy and P2 has its own copy. So this is not, uh, this is a copy of the values but not the copy of the reference. So what will happen if I say P1 is equal to P2. Oh, P2 is not here at this time. So I'm going to move this statement to after creating the, okay. So if you see, I'm assigning P1 is equal to P2 after P2 got in, uh, created and I'm changing the values to P2. So in this case, this statement will actually create the mutation, right, according to the definition. So let's see the behavior. So it is not. So it's a completely different between a copy constructor and the, the mutation, the basic behavior, because we are actually copying the values using the constructor, not, not referring both. So that is diff completely different from what we have here. So don't confuse between them. So copy constructor we can use to create copies of the uh, instance variables uh, without sharing the reference, okay? And the last one. The last one here is the destructor. So the, um, we have seen what is the destructor. So it's like a, um, um, opposite to a constructor. And uh, destructors, especially we have discussed in a lengthy topic when we talked about the garbage collection. So if you refresh your memory on the garbage collection, whenever you implement a um, destructor, in other words, uh, the finalizer here, So this is a C-sharp uh, way of creating a destructor which followed by a tile symbol and the name of the class. In VB.NET, it is a protected, if you see this is an, another access modifiers got introduced here, uh, which we, we will see more of these access modifiers in the next session. And this is called a finalizer. If you remember the finalizer, we have a finalization active list and finalization ready list created uh, by the mark and sweep algorithm. And whenever you implement the finalizer or the destructor, um, the, these objects are likely to survive two runs, two GC runs. So the first GC run will uh, mark the objects that have the finalizer block and add them, uh, um, so all the objects that are created with the finalizer will be added to the finalization active list. And when sweep cleans them up, it's going to move the uh, these references to the finalization ready list. And once the sweep is done, it's going to call the uh, finalizer thread and finalizer will start calling the finalization of each of the blocks and then the next GC run, it will try, it will clean it up from the memory completely. So it's going to need a two GC runs to clean up whenever you implement a finalizer. So it is not recommended to keep uh, write a finalizer or destructor, but you might need to do it for very, very rare special scenarios. But still, you can avoid using the finalizer completely by using a I disposable pattern. Okay, and uh, so. So destructors will be uh, again similar to a constructor. You will, you cannot explicitly call them. They will be expl implicitly invoked by the compiler or the runtime. So destructors cannot be defined in structures. So structures cannot have a destructors. That's another key thing. 
Um, so classes only can have a destructor. Why? We have already discussed the reason. Why? Because as we see, garbage collector is responsible to clean up the objects in the heap. And since structures won't go into heap, and it cannot uh, no there's there's no one who who is there to call the finalizer when these objects are getting cleaned up. So that's the reason you cannot have a destructors in struct uh, uh, in structures because structures will be in a uh, stick. I mean st uh, in the stack area because they are value types. Whereas the classes are reference types and they are in the heap and garbage collector can invoke the finalizers uh, whenever it's uh, going to claim the memory okay a class can only have uh, one destructor again so we just just unlike uh, constructors you can have multiple constructors with variable parameters uh, you cannot have uh, like that in the destructors because the reason is again same because the finalizer is going to be invoked by the garbage collector and it can invoke only one uh, because it, it will not have the values to pass in at the time of uh, claiming the memory. Uh, so uh, it can have only a default destructor. Okay, and destructors cannot be called as I uh, discussed right now. And it is destructor does not take modifiers or, or have parameters. So they cannot have parameters or even they cannot have a modifiers. Uh, so protected is a special case in VB.NET where a C sharp it is there is no modifier here. So but VB.NET carries a modifier called protected. And why? What is the significance of protector? We'll see when we discuss about the access modifiers. Okay. And uh, we'll have a quick demo of this too. And um, as a side effect, you might have already seen the destructor getting fired at this part. Okay, so this gets fired when the application is getting terminated. If you see, when the application is getting terminated, it is getting fired. Otherwise, it will be completely not deterministic. So you cannot determine when this is going to be fired because this will be fired by the garbage collector. Since I'm terminating the application, so it is invoked uh, within the ID. Okay. So that's a key difference. If your application is running live and these objects are, uh, need to be uh, claimed by garbage collector, at that time it's going to call the destructor, okay? which is not deterministic and you cannot guarantee that this is going to be fired. Okay, so that's the part of it. And uh, finally, the properties. We have already seen uh, uh, different uh, properties as of now and what we're trying to see in addition to that is the um, uh, readable and uh, uh, read only and the writable properties so properties are the members again members of the user defined data types which are a flexible mechanism to implement the reading and writing the uh, uh, values to an attribute in other words properties uh, define the state of an object Okay, so uh, what do you mean by state of an object? Uh, for example, uh, in simple uh, scenario, if you if you locate your uh, your car on a GPS um, device, as of the given time, your car is in a different position than it it was in previous when it is in motion, right? So it is changing its state uh, every time as per the time whenever it start moving. So that means its coordinates on the map are actually changing. So that means the state of the car or your object, the moving object is actually changing. So that state is defined with the properties. So at a given point, the coordinates of the uh, moving object is at uh, 1 and 10 on the x and y axis. And at a given time, it's moved to 50 to 60. So there is a change in the values that indicates the state of the object it has changed. And similarly, in the examples that we have seen, the unique ID is changed or a name of the person has changed. So the state of the object has changed. So in general, properties represent the state of an object. And the methods uh, we have seen show. 
A show is an action item. It's a verb, in other words, in the single, in the in a single, in an English literature. So, uh, verb uh, means an action item. So, the action items will define the behavior of an object. Okay. So, we'll see that uh, perspective of a class when we talk about the object-oriented programming. Okay. So, for now, the properties here we can actually have. Uh, uh, different types of properties, uh, their behavior will change based on the access modifier again. And in this case, we have simply have a public uh, properties which can be accessed by anyone who can create instance of it. Again, these are all instance members. Okay, whenever you see an instance members, make sure that uh, keep it, keep it clear in your mind that they are associated to the instantiated variable. In this case. In this case, if you see the uh, time period t is equal to new, so t is a instance variable of type time period, or t is an object of type time period. So t dot hours, that means t hours is a member of the instantiated variable. So this is not a static. So this is not a shared one. So this has a copy of its own for every t. Okay. Okay. Let's see uh, uh, how we do a read-only uh, properties and writable properties. We have already seen uh, uh, one of these examples, so we'll make use of the same examples. I'm going to take away the destructor for now. Okay, and um, I will take away this constructors, and we'll get into properties. Okay, so in this case, in C sharp, it is pretty simple. If you see, a properties has a getter and setter. Okay, so get means uh, whenever you're reading a value from a variable, uh, the get member is invoked. In this case, it's simply written in the local variable. And remember, we have uh, you, we have used this local variable to initialize it, and that's the value we are passing out. And similarly, when I'm setting a value to my uh, unique ID, uh, the setter will come into play and wherein the value is assigned to the local variable. Okay, so <clears throat> it is uh, simple to the first instance. I will take away the bottom ones. So this is nothing but the property. So property when I'm assigning a value 100, what it means, these setter will come into play. Okay, we'll see that in action. So I'm here and I'm going to say F11. So here I go. So when I'm assigning a value to it, so the 100 and value is assigned to this block. So the setter came into play. Okay, so when I hit the show, at that time I'm trying to read the value from somewhere, right? So that time it's access, actually accessing the value that is originally set. So these are setters and getters available for properties. So if I don't want someone to set it, what I need to do is as simple uh, in C sharp, it is pretty simple. All I need to do is take away the setter part. Okay, if I do this, what will happen? The code breaks because I'm trying to set the value and if you see the the error, it says it's a read-only. It is a read-only. So it becomes a read-only because it doesn't have a setter. In C sharp, it is uh, as good as making it as uh, removing the setter. Okay. So we can actually either, ha either choose to have a, a getter or setter, either one of them based on the need. Okay, so did we talk about the bookmarks in the previous sessions? Because if I have my my code is going increasing, so I can actually add a bookmark here. If you see these, this is called a toggle bookmark. I think I discussed this topic. I can actually add one here, and uh, at a given time, I've gone to somewhere else here, and I will add another bookmark here. So it is just same like you're in a book where uh, uh, you add a bookmark there and you refer to that page. 
So how we ask, I can jump, I can jump from that code to this code block. This will be helpful for uh, programming, for debugging or writing codes uh, referring to anything. So you can have a bookmark from span across multiple pages also. That's a tip. Okay, and uh, in, uh, in VB.NET, let's see what is in VB.NET. So VB.NET, it's um, again, it's the same property. You see that there's a property keyword in VB.NET and there is no such property keyword in C sharp. Okay, so you have a local variable and there's a property keyword here which is not available in C sharp. So C sharp there's no property keyword. It simply says um, public double get and set. Okay, and whereas uh, here you have a get, get and end get and set and end. So uh, and there's a keyword called property. Okay, and uh, in VB.NET, how can I make it read only? Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, what it needs to have, it's a little different. So I'm trying to remove the setter as we did in, as we did in C sharp. So the compiler complains. What it says? property without a read only or write only specifier must provide both the get and set. If you see, there is a completely different in VB.NET. So if I just remove the uh, getter, it indicates that um, you're trying to write a read only member. So what it expects you to specify it explicitly. I need to say read only. So there is no property keyword. So that's my typo. So I'll add a property and now it's all gone. So I need to say a read-only keyword to be used when I make my property uh, read-only. And similarly, uh, uh, if I want to make it only writable, uh, that means in that case I'll have a setter, um, set value, Okay, and uh, what it is complaining for? Because this is read only, so I cannot have a setter there. So if I take this off, then it should be good. Okay, so C sharp it is as simple as removing the setter, and VB dot net it is um, um, more than that. It we need to specify a read only, or in this case, I will make it is a. Uh, writable only, write only member. Okay, so you can have property name is write only. Oh, so it's breaking somewhere else because I made turn this into write only. Okay, so that's the overview of our properties. So you can make use of this to control the values that you are setting to your local members. In other words, you are trying to um, uh, encapsulation, encapsulate your local private members and protect them uh, uh, from updates that are happening from outside and so that you can add a validations on the values that are coming in. And also, uh, when you return the value, if you want to do any formatting, uh, to the value that is going out, uh, just in case of a phone number formatting and other things, you can handle at the getters, so that people can uh, get, um, see uh, the for proper formatted uh, value out. So that's all the uh, topics for the day. So in this session eight, we did walk through a complete list of uh, constructors. Uh, to start with uh, the constructors overview, the default value tables. If you don't initialize any data types um, with a given value, what is the default value associated to each of them? We did see, uh, and also we did see what's the parameterized constructor. We will see in what is an instance constructor, static constructors, private constructors, uh, copy constructors, uh, all with a very good example codes, and finally with the destructors. Uh, in other words, the finalization or finalizer implementation in C sharp. 
and uh, also we did see the properties overview and uh, with that we wind up uh, session 8 and we'll look into the next topics in the next subsequent session.